today, I would like to say something about Harold Klemp's Journey of Soul. Mahanta Transcripts Book 1. It's the first in the series. And I guess I'll answer the questions. Well, the truth is supposed to come through one man. Yes, him. Not the, not the prophets of God, but uh, Harold Klemp. And... Yes, we can come up with our own parables. There is relevant guidance for this age. But what exactly does that mean? And Paul Twitchell's The Tiger's Fang. And the key to secret worlds is mentioned therein. This book, in a way, is unique as far or as Harold Klemp's works as being considered the Mahanta, the living Eckmaster, is that it refers to a period where he doesn't really call himself the Mahanta. He calls himself the Eckmaster alone. But this speech becomes clear in the talks after that. And it's also unique in the fact that it does not, it actually mentions Darwin Gross, which is very rare. And some of these are supposed to be. Uh, edited. I mean, they're all edited, so you know he wasn't channeling the actual word of God, because God's word does not have to be changed. And so does he really tell us how to become a living God, as he eventually would have you believe if you were to fall for it. One of the tricks mentioned in here is let me ask you to shut your eyes. What do you see? You'll probably see some pink. And the sound kind of sounds like the roar of the sea. This means you're on the astral plane. If you believe that, that's up to you. But uh, think about that for a second. Um, he will tell you that he doesn't want a person to be a worshiper. Of him. Oh yes, we give him respect, but not worship. And he tells you, oh, God wouldn't want you to worship him. You don't worship the Ek Masters. Because that's what spiritual slavery is about, so you want to break free of this. But... Does spiritual freedom require abandonment of a continual connection with God? Most of us would say no. Why does he keep referring to the Christian Bible if he has his own revelations that he's trying to say? He speaks of the initiations in terms of ek consciousness blank. 
Now, two other focuses on two, well, another focus on two and five can be seen in the day of the week. That in the Islamic world, these are recommended fast days, the Monday, Thursday, which are just named after two and five. But the first initiation could be in the terms of finally thinking that you've encountered one of their leaders in the dream state, preferably him is what they want you to think. I mean, if you carried my picture around, you'd probably start dreaming about me too. And then comes the light and sound initiation, and then the fifth initiation, you're supposed to be self-realized. And the uh, eighth initiation is where God realization is supposed to happen. But it's not in the terms of what you would typically think. That God awareness is you're aware that God is there. God realization is you really find out what God is, this transcendent being, this one, to the point where we're not one. Whether you believe that we have a physical body, an astral body, a causal body, a mental body, maybe an etheric body, and a soul body, or whether you look at the very physical structure of ourselves, and how we have all these parts operating, so God's one in a way that we're not. And must our outer initiations in a corporation have to do with our spiritual advancement and be required to enforce that? One question I would like to ask to be answered by anybody who sees this video, what were the two initiatic organizations that Harold Klemp mentions that he was a part of in his early days of Ekankar, other than Ekankar. He also did not finalize his time as a Lutheran. But what were the other two? He mentions the Golden Dawn, so I would presume the Golden Dawn is one of it. Some things are sound, like practicing ethics, like chastity, and trying to maintain balance, and realizing that you're accountable for what you do and you eventually have to pay that, um, working on spiritual practices, keeping up with them, breaking through the mere mental study of the text of whatever faith that you're into to a sort of spiritual understanding that sound abandoning what doesn't seem to be working as far as ritual giving you certain experiences may not be sound. Correct beliefs and correct practices matter. And this is what ritual is supposed to enforce. Why not do something out of duty? If it's something worth doing, you can do that out of duty and go through the motions and you'll be fine. You don't have to have this emotional attachment to everything. Now, do you believe that the of God part of the angel names ending in Ia and all do you not take that literally and think that you're literally a spark of God and everything is a spark of God? We belong to God, but we're not fragments. 
of God trying to realize itself. Spiritual practices aren't some sort of black magic that abracadabra, I speak it into being. But there is some of that indication that that's what he's trying to make you think. Some people would say that he misunderstands the story of Daniel in that, oh, well, they had a reliance on their inner master. Well, the inner master was God. But the most troubling thing that you will encounter in Ekankar, as far as some people are concerned, is the idea that Satan has a job to play. That him tempting and testing and all that is not in opposition to God, it's that he actually does what God wanted him to do in the first place, is the concept there. But it sort of is about transforming oneself. There's, of course, the law of silence. I never swore that I would keep that, per se. And... Why would the uh, rodents and whatnot be what attends to you when you come down from your spiritual experiences? Would God really reveal himself in sounds and lights as a vague thing? Does the more vague your spiritual experience get, the more meaningful it is? I'm grateful for the lights and sounds I see when I do Salah or something else, but I'm not going to exaggerate the position of the psychedelic experiences. These sounds may be something you're used to, I'd say getting old has more to do with with not having all the dreams and whatnot that you used to, particularly when the volumes of the televisions and everything else go up, your stress level goes up, and you can't relax to these things. Maybe there's more family stress and other such things that you may have to deal with, but it's sort of his attempt. At thinking that he is the most advanced person, or maybe the second most advanced. And expecting you to rely on him to help you on the inner and the outer. But... Will you do such a thing? 